today let's talk about advocacy. So before we begin, let's go and double check on everyone's stats here. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Hey, Aya, how you doing, Aya? Well, I'm good, sir. Okay, I'm ready fantastic. for next year. Okay. Aya, where, where are you located? Are you in Jogja, by the way? No, I'm in my home in Banjarnegara. Oh, that's I'm right. That's right. You told me that before. Okay. All right. Thank you for the reminder then. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, please populate the boards today with your stories that you've distributed in the past week. Okay. So anything that any advocates that you've identified, any stories that you've collected, and of course, um, your distributions. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll play some background music so that everyone can, can kind of jam a little bit here. And Bila, Bila, how's it going for you? Uh, yeah, not bad. Okay. okay, not bad. Is it, is not bad better than worse or not bad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look. All right, we've got a Ponda Glulik story. Um, let me see, 73 questions. Uh, there's the, the 73 questions, Book of Vista. Okay, Book at Vista. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Mutia Kahir. Mutia Kahir. Hey, welcome, Tendi. How you doing? I, I can't hear you, Tendi. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? No? Now I can hear you much, oh, much yeah. better. Yeah. I went to Bukit Vista only, not Bukit Vista 1, so oh, wow, there's no people. <laughs> so, and then uh, jump to Bukit Vista 1. Yeah. I see. I okay. Uh, fantastic. Oh, Tendi, we have some guest testimony on Instagram. Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. And then uh, the next is tomorrow, plan for posting. Next posting. Okay. Excellent. Very good. Um, and we got one from Nawful. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Interesting. Okay, that's an interesting technique. Um, Tendi, is this post on Instagram, by the way? Yes, on Instagram and tag the guest. Uh, but I haven't checked is, if the guest is re already reposted or not. Okay, but got it. Yeah. Uh, can you bring us the, the full context, right? Maybe also the caption and the rest of the post so we can take a look at that there as well. Okay, everyone, let's see. Uh, da, 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 there's a few more here. Aya on guest advocacy. Okay, okay, Tendi on partnerships. Okay, all right. Uh, let's go ahead and start with identifying the advocate, everybody. And Nawful. Hi, Nawful. How are you doing? I'm doing good, sir. Okay, Nawful. Thank you for asking. If you can, turn on your camera so we can see you. It's uh, oh, okay. transparent. Okay. Um, Nuffel, if I understand correctly, you're here on trials. Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. I'm still on trial for the okay. business analysis intern. Oh, okay. Fantastic. Okay. Then maybe you can actually analyze our business here. So for everybody here, uh, I'll, just <laughs> I'll just introduce the little <laughs> point of having this chapter for Nuffel. Nuffel, so why do we have advocacy? Because we want people to say good things about Book and Vista, right? And we want them to uh, improve our brand. Yeah. So the main goal of this particular group is to find store, find advocates, people who are willing to share the brand and then make sure that they transmit the correct story and then uh, make sure that they distribute in the channels that would attract new users, guests, partners, and employees to Book of Vista. So that is the purpose of advocacy. So essentially it's part of our branding and also part of the way to finish our feedback loop from awareness to conversion, to transformation, 
And finally, through advocacy again. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Aya. Aya, tell us who is this advocate? Okay, first, wait. Um, we have Miss Ines from Pandak Lulik. our long, very, very long stay guest in Pandak Lulik. So, uh, she write a um, review in Airbnb about the, but yeah, again, she didn't mention about the Bukit Vista on and Pandak Lulik. And I tried to uh, pursue him to uh, pursue her to write a review in GMB. And the next one is from Erin in Pandak Mimi. She mentioned about Pondok Nini and she also said about the area and the house itself. And the third is Miss Wilma from Pondok Bagus. She is our long stay guest also. She mentioned, um, she didn't mention the property and just mentioned the house, also the area. Okay, let's go over to Tendi. Tendi, do you believe that these are good examples of advocates here at Tendi? Okay, so uh, uh, I think this uh, three guests uh, is good. We have the communication, and then actually we we try to run a new strategy for the for the advocature. Uh, we we know that the guest is leave a good review, uh, and then actually they have the they willing to give a good word, but I think lack of uh, direction uh, for what they need to say. Right. Uh, if, for example, like us mentioned, booking, but we 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 try to uh, the new strategy that the guests actually can rewrite, but on the GMB like that, sir. So huh? the guest is uh, make on the GMB, but uh, we discuss it that uh, we decide the for the guest that writing the review on the GMB of the property, sir. Uh, okay. Not on the Bukit Vista. What that uh, why? Because if we put on the property. Uh, then uh, other property also maybe can see uh, that oh this property managed by Bukit Vista like that because uh, the guest is mentioned Bukit Vista on the property uh, maps like that. Okay, let me actually try to understand that a little bit better here. Uh, let's go to let's go to Bila. Is that a good idea to you to actually take let's say guest advocacy and put it on our Google My Business? Uh, our Google Map business. Ah, yeah. Uh, it means that does it means that we are the one who put it instead of the guest? Oh no, the guest would put it, but we would ah. we would help them use a template to craft their oh. story, right? Uh, I think template would be a little bit too rigid in a way because uh, it's not sounding too uh, genuine in my opinion. If it's a template, yeah. So okay. I think uh, we have to give more freedom to the person to write something maybe you can give them like oh can you like mention Bukit Vista or something instead of giving them template hmm okay all right let's go back to Tendi Tendi there's a few things I see that could be an issue with that one um, guests yep. do not usually use GMB to find Bukit Vista guests will use OTAs they'll use Instagram they'll use these sources to find Bukit Vista GMB is a local to local channel right so if you're already in bali you're looking for let's say somebody who can help you with something um that's what you use gmb for you can ask yourself this simple question how often have you used google my business to find a hotel uh actually a lot sir you do yeah I, because i i see the rating as well on the gmb mm -hmm. Yeah, because I see the rating also in, G in GMB before I book, uh, and then if the rating is five, then uh, I I usually uh, see the, the the review on the GMB as well. Uh, so, okay, yeah. okay, all right. In that particular case, if that's the case, then all right, let's uh, let's try it out. Very good. Um, let's examine this a little bit more though. Um, in this particular advocacy, uh, what level? of advocacy are these people talking about right here? Is it meeting expectations, meeting desires, or meeting unrecognized needs? Well, okay, maybe I will uh, let Aya uh, mm -hmm. to, to try to analyze it. What do you think, Aya? 
Um, I think it's still on the mid expectation stage. Right, it's meeting expectations. How do we know it's meeting expectations? Um, because they already feel the experience, but, but somehow we didn't, what is it, like, fulfill their unrecognized needs. Right, right, right. Very good. So in these particular cases, these are expectation type advocates. These are not unrecognized needs advocates, okay? So unrecognized needs will sound much more powerful. It will sound like somebody was like, you know, I didn't even know that I loved um, this flavor of ice cream, but my host recommended me to try it and I experienced it for the first time. Oh, I didn't even know that I could actually enjoy something that had been pooped out of an animal. But when my host brought me to try a coffee luwak for the very first time, I found it to be the most incredible coffee experience I've ever had, right? So that kind of is a unrecognized need. I didn't know that I really wanted something, but this person was able to show me, okay? That becomes a very strong story that then continues to propagate, okay? So the kind of advocacy that we're seeing here is from the bottom level right now, is meeting expectations, okay? Um, we are still looking to find people who are truly moved, truly transformed. Uh, the best way to actually think about it is this. Uh, Think about like the IGPs, right? The intern graduation presentations. What are the best ones sound like? The best ones generally sound like I started at Boca Vista like here. And then when I left Boca Vista, I was like here, right? I was transformed. That's what the guest experience should also sound like, right? I came to Bali not expecting anything, but quickly I found that this was one of the most lovely places in the world. And let me tell you why. From the moment Boca Vista first talked to me, I knew that somebody cared about me as a person. They understood everything about why I was traveling. They understood what I liked. They even arranged to have like all my favorite snacks arranged before I checked in, right? And over the next few days, my host who checked in with me every morning asked me great questions and I was able to make sure that every day I spent it correctly doing the things that I love doing and finding also some things that I didn't know I would enjoy doing. Over this entire holiday, I truly have become a different person, become more spiritual, I've become more knowledgeable about Balinese culture, and I will take this with me and share it with all my friends in my home country, right? You see, that's, that sounds different, right? That's coming from like a different place in your heart. So that's what truly good advocacy really would look like, right? Meeting those unrecognized desires, okay? All right, Aya. Um, but um, sorry, but I think it's already in the second stage, mid desire, because uh, three of them already said, like, highly recommend about the property. I mean, it's really passionate work. They they really, really recommend about the property. So that is true. Uh, Go to Bila. Bila, what, how would you know if you met desires? Is it that they would really recommend the property, or is like, what, how would you know if somebody really their desires were met? Um, I think they would, I think it's kind of blurry in a way, in my opinion, because like, even though it's a uh, mid expectation, you can also still recommend uh, this to other people, right? Mm -hmm. But mid desires, I think uh, you will like, I think the message will be more personal in a way. And then uh, it won't be like a template gitu, and then you would come again and then you would uh, speak nice of the Bukit Vista instead of only the property because uh, most of these are talking about the property instead of right. the Vista. I think it's more of expectation right. instead of the desire. Correct, correct. Listen also, Aya, most of these things that they're describing are things that we have no control over, right? They're mostly talking about the property and about the on-site staff. They're not talking about our team. They're not talking about our service. They're not talking about our curation or ability to understand their needs and deliver an experience, okay? So these are things then that don't really illustrate Book of Vista. They illustrate what the property does, okay? So once again, it's a little bit like this. Why do you go to a restaurant, Aya, to eat? Why not just, you know, have nasi goreng at home, right? Because the restaurant, in addition to serving you nasi goreng, is putting it in a very beautiful space in a very convenient location in a place that has let's say 
um, a flawless service experience, right? Maybe you can go there with a friend and entertain them and have a different kind of experience than you, you would have at home. So when you're meeting desires, you're, you're not just kind of serving the nasi goreng, you're, you're, you're creating entire world around that nasi goreng that makes it more, more of an experience. Okay. So that I think is the key things I look for in identifying an advocate. Now, some people cannot experience it, right? Some people, they only see the nasi goreng. They, they're, they're kind of blind to all the other parts, but you don't necessarily want that person to be advocating either, right? Because they, they're not sensitive to the other things that are happening around them. Okay. Uh, Tendi, over to you. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, you said that uh, they are not <clears throat> mentioned like uh, Bukit Pista or something, right? <clears throat> but um, I said that uh, most of the guests is mentioned about host. The mm -hmm. host, and then they they also spread it like a super friendly host and staff. Mm -hmm. Because when I communicate, uh, we introduce that uh, we are your host uh, from Airbnb, right? Mm -hmm. And then I think if this review on Airbnb, then everyone know who is the host. Because the host is like Wayana Bukit Vista and Bayu Bukit Vista, right? That's actually, I think it's already personal because mm -hmm. they mentioned the host, not like, like uh, the people. They not mentioned that the people are good. That's mean more general, right? What do you think? Um, not good enough, Tendi. And this is why. Mm -hmm. Because the host is ambiguous. It could be us. It could be the Pambantu at the property. It could be the driver. It could be any of the string of people who actually came right? What this tells me is if the host doesn't have a name, right, then the host, whoever's doing the experience has not personalized the experience, right? They are just yep. like, like, think of this way, right? When you think of like, let's say customer service at Tokopedia, okay, it's just customer service. It's not even a person. Yep. It's just like kind of a department. It's, it's customer service, right? But if you get really good service, you'll be like, oh, it's Tony, right? Or no, it's 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 uh, it's Anthony, or it's it's Wendy, or it's whoever. They'll have a person associated with it. Now, listen, when you're traveling, this is probably one of the most uh, intimate relationships that you can have with somebody because there's a strong dependency between the person traveling who has no knowledge or experience or anything about the area, and the host who has a lot of experience, hopefully. Okay, and so that's where I think the levels come in. If Yes, the people is probably the worst. It's just a general blob of, of, of bodies there, no specific identity. The host is slightly better, but what you're really looking for is who is the person that is specifically creating my experience, okay? Um, did I feel that? Did I feel that there was a person who really cared? Look at all the really, really good examples. That, uh, look at five-star hotels, Amman, Four Seasons. There's always a person. And that person has a name. That's how clear it is. That's how unrecognized needs are served. Because uh, after all, you'll start detecting it that way. Aya, what I want you to do is this. I want you to look up Amanjiwo, okay? And I want you to look up Amanjiwo on TripAdvisor. And while the rest of us discuss this, I want you to find a review that is absolutely amazing, okay? And bring that review over here and screenshot it, okay? Um, in the meantime, let's go over to Tendi's uh, advocate. Tendi, tell us about what happened here. Oh, right. Okay, so uh, this one is one of our community experts from Echo for Pest, actually. And okay. then uh, the we, we what's called the we use the Echo for Pest for the filter press, and then uh, we would like to collaborate for make a, a story and then uh, we put the the blog on their website and then uh, like we also put the like on the website and then uh, yesterday uh, we had uh, what's called the eco Press already willing to put our website link I put on the the next stage I think on the distribution uh, so they already put on their website and then most uh, the eco for Press already also managed uh, what's called have a client on in begin area and then uh, Jimara and uh, the villa and then uh, they they willing to talk more about that and then maybe uh, they they will uh, what's called recommend the owner look at Vista and then tell us some 
a few name of the villa that they they they, they have the client like that. Hey, that's excellent. There we go, Tendi. All right, this is really important work, everyone. So once you've identified a potential co-branding partner, like Eco, is it Eco Forest or Eco Pest? Eco for pest, sir. So oh, like Eco pest for control. Pest. Eco for pest. Yeah. Then you can you can branch out. You can have many different types of collaborations. Tendi, you're going in the correct direction. So you can do link exchange, and that's what you're doing now. I'll put my link on your website, and I'll put my link on you know like like exchange links on each other's websites. Right? That's what you can make a co-branded video. In fact, we have content people, right? And you could say, yeah. all right, why don't we do a collaboration video? Eco for Pest, you talk about what you're good at, and Book Vista will talk about what we're good at, and even include an owner who can say good things about both of us, right? And that would be very powerful, right? That would be a uh, another opportunity. So these are all different ways that once you have an advocate, you can get very creative about how you want to develop a story, and from that story, there's more more options there, okay? Um, but good, good. That's a good identification of an advocate. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Okay. I have, I don't know what this is. Uh, Somebody dropped. I I put two links. Maybe this is. There you uh, have it. Yeah. Tendi is the absolute man. Okay. For the guest that side, is right? <laughs> like uh, the example. Yeah. Maybe okay. we can analyze. That's what I'm talking about. Right. So you see, this is really personal now. Um, that is how you know you've triggered something above meeting expectations or, or or desires. When somebody calls you the absolute man, right, or the absolute woman, you know that you have their complete trust. You have their complete advocacy, right? They are they're saying that you're awesome. You're so awesome, um, so kind, and full of great recommendations. Great time a single fan with and his friends. So this is really beautiful because. Um, Maslow pyramid again. Let's let's take a look at this. A guest experiences what if they are? Uh, let's let's go and take a Maslow pyramid, copy it over here, and take a look. Um, Aya, what level of experience is this guest um, feeling? The one in the middle, based on the Maslow pyramid that you see here. Stage three, love and belonging. Yeah, he's feeling belonging because he's hanging out mm. with Tendi and Tendi's friends. So now mm. he's alone. He doesn't feel by himself. He feels like he's part of a group. Okay, so that's really good. That's the higher up you go, everybody, the more unrecognized needs happen. The lower level you go, the more just meeting desires or expectations. Aya. As you can see, some of your advocate stories, they are bottom level. They're just physiological needs, right? Yes, the place was clean. Yes, it was convenient. Yes, it was this. Yes, it was that. So mostly, let's say, physiological, right? Um, but when you start getting into self-actualization, esteem, love, and belonging, those are really strong advocacy stories, okay? So definitely look for that. And if they're not there, Aya, it also means that we may, we're not delivering those kinds of experiences. And that's what we need to do more of. Okay. But it is part of a feedback cycle too, as well. Okay. Over to Tendi. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we have the highest level is self actualization, right? Yes, uh, sir. Desire, um, I just want to bring to the floor which of this uh, review that shown the self actualization like that. Okay. Very rare. Uh, <laughs> uh okay. Uh, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, I don't think any of them actually. Uh, uh, okay. esteem, no, esteem? No, 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 no. Uh, maybe esteem, recognition, strength, freedom, status, respect. Esteem, okay, let's see. Uh, you might be able to say this, right? You might be able to say when somebody feels you're helpful, that could be esteem, right? They feel like they're being respected. 
Okay. Helpfulness could be a layer of esteem. Um, but let's see if I see any of the top ones here. How about Serene? Serene Neo, sir. How about what? Serene Neo, the, the, the review. The, Serene Neo. The, the okay. name is Okay. Okay. That is probably there's just the first two physiological safety and maybe a bit of love and belonging yeah um, a bit of love and belonging but i don't see i don't see a lot of esteem and i don't see self-actualization there um okay let's see nope uh no self-actualization in any of these reviews yet self-actualization is very very rare and it sounds like this technique mm -hmm. self-actualization sounds like this it sounds like um i didn't know that i would ever learn to kite surf right mm -hmm. so yep. here is my story i got to bali and it was a stormy wet day and my host was very kind and uh, picked me up right from the airport during the ride to the airbnb we had a chance to, to, you know, talk about what we wanted to do. And then I had not known that Bali was actually one of the premier places in the world to do kite surfing. And uh, my host, you know, kindly suggested maybe I could try because he had a friend who was a kite surfing champion. And as a result, on a Sunday morning, we went kite surfing. During this kite surfing trip, I discovered that I had uh, a really hidden talent for being able to do this. And I was able to catch five waves. Um, during this experience, I'm hooked on kite surfing. I will do this when I get back home and I will come back to Bali immediately again so I can relive this experience, right? So that's self-actualization. That's somebody who is experiencing essentially a transformation in who they are because they have been guided to a particular... Uh, me, right? I went to Bali. I fell in love with Bali. I stayed in Bali, right? So I was kind of like, you know, um, self-actualized. The people who looked after me, my hosts, um, they didn't, they were not transactional, right? This guy, he found me on the street and he brought me into his uh, family temple. He brought me to ceremonies. He brought me to see his cousins. I think they tried to get me to try to marry them and all this stuff. But that was really like self-actualization, right? I became kind of Balinese after that whole experience because I was absorbed in that world. Uh, they spoke to me in Balinese all the time. So that's, that's what you, you sense when you get self-actualization. Like this person is becoming a new person now because of the experiences that they've, they've encountered. Okay. Um, okay. Does that, does that make sense, Cindy? Yes, I think so. That's uh, really makes sense. So, so that's actually the highest goal, right? The highest level. That's the highest goal. That's the highest goal. You basically want somebody to say that they are a different person when they are around you the your property whatever right that essentially yep. they can go and have an identity refreshment that i'm not just you know like like imagine this tendy imagine you have a special place in italy and you go there and you realize yep. there's foods that you didn't know that you could love so much right you realize that you really enjoy bicycling in the italian countryside uh going through vineyards and talking to local farmers and learning how they grow grapes right and and you watch the process of how this grape is made into wine and then when you go back home you drink this wine all the time because it reminds me of being in italy and then you fantasize yeah. about when's the next time i can go back to italy and experience this again mm. because it's, it's it's part of me i never knew i even had and that oh, yeah. is when somebody is transformed okay it's when yep. it, it, it we all know what it's like right you know the really really super brands like the apple the nike whatever you know and people really are passionate about it they'll line up they'll pay all this extra money to get in um that's what it's about that's what i think self-actualization and how strong that feeling can be okay let's go ahead and take a look at uh th this part is very important um let's go ahead and take a look at this one okay aya you brought us an aman jiwo uh review tell us more about this one okay um i think when you say about self-actualization Dimitri already raised that stage because when he mentioned Budi as his guide, yes. he also mentioned that he learned some Tai Chi movement and yeah. they can uh, he can make the Tai Chi more interesting for yeah. his 
Is that right? Yes. You're beginning I, to see that yeah, now, right? I also, okay, 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 I got it. You got okay. it, right? That is what a perfect yep, yep. review looks like. That is when somebody is truly transformed. Mm -hmm. You have, you have, you have actually changed who they are as a person. Okay. Um, yep. And we do that a lot here inside the company for interns. We do that a lot for our partners, but do we do that often enough for our guests? Do we try to take the two or three days, see that as an opportunity and make this person a different person, right? Um, I've been able to transform a lot of people. I'll tell you some brilliant stories I've had. Okay. So one story, there was this, uh, there was this girl from South Africa, I think she was very attractive, uh, very young. And why and I both met her, she was staying at, uh, I forgot some, somewhere, I think maybe Dinar Hills or somewhere. Okay. So we pick her up and she's just really down. Um, she, in fact, she leaves her Airbnb, comes down to our base to rent a motorbike. Right. Um, and she's just hanging out at the base. She's talking to our employees. She's having lunch with us and she's just like a really entertaining guest, right? She's like very in the present. She loves every moment of being with us. And we're like, okay, you seem really, really, you know, down. Like, what do you want to see? She's like, I want to see everything. So we take her, we bring her to Uluwatu Temple. We bring her to the secret temple underneath in, uh, by Nyang Nyang Beach. We bring her to the beach. We bring her to Single Fin. At that night on Single Fin, we, we asked Bayou and all our other friends to come along. And so she's able to kind of like get, get like, you know, a crowd at Single Fin. And then she sees this guy that she's really attracted to at Single Fin. And we offer to introduce him to her, right? And we do. And I think now they're married or something, right? But they were dating for a while and, and uh, they fell in love with each other right there. That, unfortunately, that person never told that story. It was, it was so hyper real. I think they, they didn't even, you know, but that is transformation, right? That is how, uh, that's the very purpose of doing the kind of work that we do. Because that's really nice to see that, right? You actually changed somebody's life, um, not in a day, but like in like, you know, the rest of their life is going to go in a different direction because you were involved. Okay. So that's the kind of power that we get actually here in our kind of work. Not a lot of kinds of work get that sort of influence, but travel holidays are a very influential period in people's lives. And that's, that's the kind of stories that we want. Okay. Those are a plus stories. Okay. All right. So look for that. If we don't have it, it probably means we're not delivering that. And we need to think of more ways of how we can actually do it. All right. So that could be something to think about. I'll give you an example. Aya, you worked in the reservation team for a while. So here's an example of something that we could do, right? Imagine instead of just chatting back and forth on WhatsApp with somebody, you go, hey, I'm going to call this person on a video call, right? And you video call. And then you show them, hey, I saw that we were trying to like, you know, arrange a property for you to accommodation to stay, but I've got a better idea. Why don't we do this? Why don't I invite you to where by and I'll do a video presentation of some of our best five properties in the bouquet. And we'll do a three do walkthrough through some of these newest properties that we have because you seem like you're really interested, right? You go, sure. okay, great. So you bring them in, they're in where by. And then you use ways 3D thing, right? And you just walk them through all the different properties and you tell them, yeah, around here, there's a really good restaurant that sells fresh, you know, seafood and you can order and only cost five bucks and it's grilled over coconut wood fire, right? So now you are really personalizing that reservation experience, right? It's not just, I'm talking to a customer support person. I'm actually experiencing Bali while I'm still in, my home country, right? Because you are essentially telling me a very, very entertaining story. And that is the reason I choose you. That's the reason I book, right? So those are all the types of just suggestions that that we can add that would get us that kind of story, okay? Uh, does that make sense, everyone? Yeah? So that's where hospitality magic happens. All right, great. Um, let's keep on going. Uh, but great questions, Tenny, by the way. That's, that's uh, you know, we have to have kind of a vision to be able to see it. Next, Tendi, partnership advocacy. Ooh, Ma Yuli. All right, Panok Lilik. Panok Lilik, Sisea Guest House. All right, and Alpha is our community manager. Okay, tell us more about this one. Okay, so yeah, actually, we have the session uh, for okay. the, with the for our lake. Uh, 
we like to uh, the, the partners share uh, the story about their uh, the story yeah about the okay. how they uh, innovate to uh, what's called uh, about the their property because uh, currently uh, she's uh, make a new building a new property at the okay. she's also transform I think and okay. the name is Pondok Sase, the location in the Sase area so this is new one and then she give us give us to manage as well the, nice. the building, new property like that so I think this uh, uh partner is transforming well okay. then uh also uh we we catch up some uh what's called uh the session like using the draft and then later uh gani will introduce me the new writer i think okay. or make the the start the block like that. excellent excellent very good so teddy you got all the notes and bulletin points that are pretty good here i see the transformation cycles happening like she's advocating us she's growing she has a lot of strong points so that I think is a key. Of course, uh, you don't have a story yet. You just have notes right now. But of course, yep. you already told me that uh, there's going to be a writer involved so that you can create this. Okay. Yeah, that's a strong story. That kind of story uh, should be shared all over Changu. Everybody in Changu who owns property should know that story because that is a very brilliant story. And even better is if you create an event and you invite uh, Ibu Lilik to actually tell that story, right? Oh, yeah. um, so you have a few different directions you can go here. You can go with the story. You can even go with this as well. Um, do you guys remember this? Let's go to the next frame. 73 questions with uh, Nadine and Ara, right? Maybe you could do that as well. 73 questions with Ibu Lilik, right? And you ask her all the questions that would elicit the response here. Uh, Ibu Lilik, how many rooms did you begin with? Six. How many rooms do you have now? 27. What do you think is the main reason that people book your property? It's close to the beach. Uh, what about parking? Is it convenient for somebody to find parking here? Oh, yes, it is, right? Um, how long have you been working with Book Vista since 2017? What would you call your experiences being, right? So that can be a way to also tell the story and frame it in a video that can be done without even having a writer as well, right, uh, Tendi? So you have many different choices once you have the core, core idea of the story of how to express the story. You can express it using a video, you can express it using a blog. But Tendi, look, I mean, it might be easier just to make a video in this particular case, no? Yep, right? yep, yep, yep. It would just involve you, way an hour, less than an hour, and you film her as she walks through her property and you ask her these questions, right? You actually know how to do this already, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Again, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I need to uh, allocate my time for, for doing that, yeah. For it's, it's really about reinventing the wheel. And yes. I mean, it's, it's, it's already there. You already have the technique. And by the way, everyone, I say it because uh, Tendi came up with this idea in the first place, I think, right? And, and, and for some reason, it's changed into a blog. But listen, everyone, uh, it's not wrong to use a blog because some owners read. Some owners don't read. Some owners watch. Some owners don't even watch. They might just look at Instagram or they might read an email. So I think it's also important to make sure that your message, your story is friendly in all the different formats and channels that somebody might actually be consuming, okay? If there are video watchers, make sure there's a video. If they're Facebook, make sure that there's social media thing. If they're whatever, then you know you might have to take the story and break it into these channel fits so that they will detect it. Otherwise, some people don't watch videos, right? Some people only read. Some people don't read, they watch videos. Some people don't read email. Some people will read email. So vice versa. But once you get the core story, um, then you can kind of distribute it as you will. Okay. All right, Bila. Um, Bila, I think I actually gave you this idea on the branding and copywriting one, right? So right now, I think the advocacy or the stories that we're sharing to attract candidates to book at Vista right now in our emails, they're still very transactional. You're saying that these are the benefits, these are the requirements, right? But did you watch the video I sent you, Bila? Yeah, I just uh, watched it actually. Okay, what did you see? Okay, the video I'm referring to everyone is a video of an Apple engineer who just works on microphones and sound at Apple, okay? What did you see in that video, Bila? 
you mean the video for Apple one? I thought the one from branding. So, <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I just uh, I watched the branding one, and maybe I'll take thirty second to watch this. Okay. Um, share your screen then, Bila. Let's have everyone watch it. Yeah. Okay. Um, the reason I shared this video with Bila is this: the problem was here. Bila was sharing out, uh, I think, whale hunting and other awareness notifications to try to find a candidate for a revenue management job, okay? And the problem was we were getting applicants, but they were only job fit. They were only here to do a job. They didn't really care about, like, you know, the complexities or the, the purpose of revenue management. So the problem is the story. The story, if you're sharing, is just about here are the benefits, here's the requirements, then you are just hiring somebody who is going to be looking for a job. But if you yeah. tell the story about what revenue management is, why it's important, actually, I think it was community management too as well, right? Um, then it's different. Then it becomes, yep. oh, I never saw myself as a community manager, unrecognized need, right? But I really would like doing that job, right? Um, so Bila, share us the video and maybe we can all take a look at it. Bila's like, where's the video? Where's the video? <laughs> Can I see the screen that I share? Uh, no, I can't see any screen oh, actually. Here. I see. Wait, wait a second. Okay. Can you see it now? Uh, yeah, I see some screen, but go, go ahead and play. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Components of the whole Can experience. you hear it? It's a large part of how we communicate. It's how we experience music. Even though it's invisible, if you take it away or it's not good, then people will start to notice. When you see how much complexity goes into the product, you realize that the details really matter. As an audio hardware engineer, I've always been someone who obsesses over the details. We want all of these little details to come together to make something even better. And that's why I love what I do. Okay, so this might be, yes, exactly. So you guys, everyone has to remember this. Normally when you see an Apple advertisement, it's about their product. But this one isn't about the product. This one is about what is going on in the mind of somebody who makes the product. And the way that it's emphasized is actually really interesting because is it a job, Tendi? Is it a career or is it a calling? What did you detect in that story? thing is calling sir okay let's go to Aya what do you think is it job career or calling um a job also a calling mm, okay well you have to decide right it can't be all three all two so okay. is it a job career um a calling because we can get a lot of the failure of the product through this video also okay all right Bila what do you think it is yeah, I would agree that it is a calling. Right. Excellent. It's a calling because she cares a lot about the the work, right? Because as an audio engineer, details really matter. I really care about all the details that provide that experience. So that's not that's not just a job anymore. That's not like, oh, you know, I get paid to do this and that's why I like it. Apple has um, you know, great benefits. They pay for my dental care. Um, no, it's 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 that you're really passionate about kind of work and you can see in the way the video was framed in the tone in the use of color and like what they chose to focus on it's all about the detail the detail the detail right you know the face the lasers the the tools all the things that they're using just to make sure that they have a great audio experience so that is uh that's what we talk about when we talk about like this idea of finding a really compelling story okay so okay anyway let's go back to sharing the mirror there um, but, uh, Tendi, I think you're on the right path for the, uh, advocacy story on public Kulik, right? She apparently is experiencing, um, what you're looking for in this particular case is legacy also as well, right? You're looking for, you're looking for this. You have a story that has a relationship alignment, but there could be a legacy story in there. Do you see it? Uh, 
Yes, sir. I think there's a legacy story that um, because Wakuli also it refers to their uh, give a referral for their family as well. The the Prama Beach House. The their um that's um Pondok Luli grandfather like that. So <clears throat> have a property as well. I think. Yeah, Boluli is already on the legacy yeah, level. Uh, not if you don't know what the story is, right? Not if you don't know what the story is. You have to add together all the pieces to see what is the story, right? In this particular case, I'm adding this together. She seems to care a lot about her family. She seems to care a lot about her guests. She seems to care a lot about the relationships she has around her. So she cares yeah. about her community. And this relationship with Buga Vista is helping her empower her community. Okay. So that's the kind of, of story you need to bring up to the surface, right? Pondok Lily is a person who cares about Bali. She cares about her community. She cares about her property. She cares about her employees. She cares about her guests. And so these are all the things that make, and, and so does Buga Vista, right? And so these are all the things that makes her story compelling to another owner who feels the same way okay so that is then how you draw owners that care to you because you can share that our owners at Buga Vista care about family they care about their teams and they care about you know their communities that they're in so when you care about Bali join Buga Vista okay yeah. so that's 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 you know a little bit cheesy but okay you know you get the idea right that's the story that that elevates all the facts into a, a legacy story. Okay, so um, okay, that that's that. Let's let's go and look at the distribution now. Uh, Bila, what do we have? Or wait, we don't have anything from Bila. Bila, you must have some distribution. Uh, oh, oh, I put it on the yeah the distribution one from uh, Cindy, I believe. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> did herself okay. yeah <laughs> that's right no she's the advocate not the one who are looking for the advocate so yeah okay okay well done um uh, what do you see here yeah i think uh i don't know i feel like it is most likely just like all of the other all of the other story from the other intern but i think we have opportunity more on cindy since she's the one who are doing this advocacy i thought that should be more uh, emphasizing on the advocacy that we have been doing and how does it uh, impact her, so on and so forth. So I think that is the thing that I think should have been better in a way. Ah. That can also, <laughs> like you say, it's more of a calling to the advocate out there. Yes. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, that I think it's way too general in a way. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So that's unfortunate. You're right, uh, Bila, in this particular case, because this is what happens when you do the activities, but don't necessarily connect all the activities to the higher purpose, right? So you you say, yeah, I did this, I did this, I did this. Um, that's exactly the Pondaglulik story, Tendi, when you don't recognize the story, right? But what did all of this actually mean? What if you add up all your experiences? What is the theme? What builds like the entire mega story? So in this particular case, um, I mean, she did kind of do it. I innovated tools. I ran projects, you know, but she kind of missed out on the, the very basic. I became um, transformed in a way that I didn't know advocacy was actually this thing. And during my time here, I had all these close encounters where I was enriched by stories of how people's lives had been changed and how Book of Vista enhanced their lives and such and such, right? So that that is missing in this story, which would have been really, really thematically correct, like Bila said, if it was there. So uh, that makes it now harder for somebody to fall in love with the idea of doing advocacy because there's no story of advocacy. There's only the story of me, Bila, and, and whatever being close colleagues but it doesn't draw people to the purpose of the work itself, right? Um, and that 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 is, uh, yeah, okay. Um, anyways, in that particular case, 
uh, Bila, this should have been over in the story section, not the distribution, right? The distribution, I think, is correct. It should be on LinkedIn, um, but uh, ideally more, more, more sharp story. Okay, next, let's go to Tendi. Tendi, what do you got here uh, for Audison and partnership? Okay, uh, or my connection, maybe. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, this is uh, yeah, we post on Instagram uh, for the Mocha Kair, and then uh, we tag it as well to the guest, and then she give uh, us a picture as well, the cute picture for uh, <laughs> the, the design like that. Okay, very good. Like that. Has she reposted it yet? Uh, I, I'm, I, I checked to the, to their, uh, to her story. I think it's already passed. So I, I didn't catch it. <laughs> I missed okay. the, uh, oh, yeah. the time when the post, I think. Um, okay. okay. Um, I just re-check on the, on her Instagram when this already post, but yes, she didn't repost it. Okay. Guess oh, why yeah. she didn't repost. Oh, <laughs> Do you know why she might not have reposted? Mm, I think what? There's an adoption mistake here, I think. Um, this is way too busy for Instagram. You see all this text here on the second frame? Uh, yeah. So I think you did it right on the first frame, but the second frame was way too long. Okay. If you really needed to, I would have broken that up into maybe three sections and perhaps instead of having her picture show a evidence of each one, right? Like uh, easy to find the villa, right? Boom. Maybe show a map or a guidebook that we use. Okay. And that quote. Okay. So the quote goes together with a piece of evidence. Driver from the villa, right? What does the driver look like? and put that next to that quote, okay? Second frame. Third frame, driver was super helpful, nice. Okay, what does he look like, right? Put his picture there and then that. So then as somebody is going through this story, they're able to focus one frame at a time. On Instagram, it's really difficult to see a lot of text. I'll hit you at the same time, right? But it's easier to say, all right, uh, frame one, frame two, it's like a slideshow right? With one word. <laughs> and, and then they would get the experience. So this, this, this doesn't look entirely professional in, in my opinion, right? It's very jam packed and it's not using Instagram in the best way possible. Okay. If you had done that, then she would have been, Oh, this looks cool. You know, I can, I can dig it. And there would be a higher chance of course that she could uh, share it. Right. The other thing that you have to get good at is this, you have to persuade them why they should share. And for that, come and attend the conversion class and we'll tell you techniques that you can use, right, um, to, to be more persuasive. So that that's perhaps a different skill as well. But okay, um, what you can do in this particular case is to distribute the story a little bit better. D. Cold Spaghetti, that's a very funny Instagram handle. How many followers does she have, Tendi? Uh, 38, sorry, because I think the, he, as he said the account is dead, so okay. she make a new one, yeah. Okay, behance. Okay, all right, cool. All right, uh, there's a bit of that. And then you have another one. Uh, you actually have two more. You have uh, Audison on partnership. Yep, that's uh, the new GMB review uh, from the, yeah, I think I this one got it on the Google Maps. And then okay. the second one is the, the story of Asifilet is posted. Okay. But I need to talk with the girl, I think, uh, for the hero photo need to be more attractive because rather than just show the property, maybe it can be with the face of the owner because when we post something and then, uh, because there is a lot of property in Bali, right? Uh, they, uh, we didn't know where is it. But if we post the, the face of the owner, maybe, oh, I know this person. Uh, she she joined with Bugusia, right? So, so yeah. I think more uh, the partner more easier to recognize the person rather than the of property. Course. Right? Of course, look if you want to actually engage your partners and their teams to help you, then I think as part of the photo carousel attendee, put their pictures with the property yeah. because that is probably who the guest is going to meet. 
And so celebrate them. It, it, you know, even be generous, right? Instead of like competing with the owner, why not just make them part of Booga Vista? Say, hey, look, Booga Vista, we have um, you know on-site hosts, and they work together with us, and they'll be happy. Their names are Yuli and Indra, right? Um, and here's their photos. And so let them be stars as well. That's a really, really effective um, storytelling technique, but it's also an effective management technique. Because yep. I'm sure the on-site staff like being mentioned themselves, right, in the work. And that is another part of your community as well, Tendi. It's not just the owners, but it's the staff and the people who, you know, fold the beds and clean the rooms and all that stuff. And those people should probably recognize as part of our community too from time to time. Because those are the people who work behind the scenes to make sure that we get, you know, our thing done. And those people should be advocates of Book of Vista as well, mm. right? So don't forget, it's not just about the guests and the partners and the owners. It's also about who are the teams that make this experience possible. Yep. You know, there, there's there's tons of stories you can even go on that one. Who brings the coffee, right? Who uh, is there? Is there anybody who brings like let's say organic food or local products into the property? Um, how many years has the cleaning staff been working there? Uh, what do their children do, right? What is the cleaning staff's person? You know, like how many kids do they have? Uh, is there is there a family story there? And those are all rich stories that guests, partners, everybody really, really celebrates. Because if you're really inspiring to light everyone, every time, everywhere, then these stories should actually carry some weight as well. Okay. So definitely think about how to add the people to the property because the property by itself doesn't go up the pyramid very far. Okay. So, okay. Um, I, if I remember correctly, uh, Tendi, your SLA is is incomplete because of the stories, right? You don't have enough uh, stories. Yeah, one, more, one more story for the partner. And, okay. And then I think seven more for guests. So. Okay. But you don't have stories because if I'm not mistaken, you don't have stories because you don't identify the advocate. Not Like once you identify an advocate, you have a pretty good story actually. But it's just not enough identification who is the advocate. Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. Because uh, currently we identify from the MB review and then some for the guests that transforming. Like that. Okay. You might need to survey from time to time, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, an important thing. Like just, hey, uh, Chris Cabanes, how are you doing? Would you recommend Book of Vista to anybody? Right? Oh, Chris is not good. Chris is an anti-advocate because he doesn't like his name or his face on anything, right? So he will not be a good advocate in this particular case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. maybe another owner who you want to rekindle a relationship with. And that could be a direction there. Okay. Um, quickly, uh, Bila, are you reaching your advocacy goals right now? Redice yet, but I think uh, I've seen some referrals, but I'm not sure if it's already uh, what uh, fulfilling the SLA for this week at least. Okay, all right, we should probably check that, yeah, and yeah. make sure that if you have not achieved your SLAs, that you're bringing evidence of your work here, so we can take a look at, at what's not achieving. What about Aya? Aya, are you achieving your SLAs on your funnel? Um, yeah, actually, I am not achieved it yet because uh, my friction is it's hard to track the guests when they share their experience in social media. Mm, okay, this could be because you're not timing it correctly, right? You probably should actually look for engaged guests during their experience, not after, okay? So I think you mm. are looking after the experience to find them. You should be looking during the experience and the way to find them is to actually talk with the reservations team and say, who's the most pumped up guest that you've actually encountered this week, right? Who seems like very excited, who has big plans, who has like a birthday coming up and really get into those particular guests and, and ask them, hey, uh, I work on advocacy at Bugas Vista. Do you want to tell us your story, right? Um, I'm here to listen, okay? And that will fix it because you're you're kind of relaxing, relying on a reactive approach. You're waiting for them to say something. You should be more proactive and find out the person who might say something. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. SLA not cheap. Okay. Um, make sure this happens, everyone. Right for the next chapter meeting. I really need everyone to bring in the kind of work that they're doing 
so that we can understand what exactly is the main cause of your SLA not being achieved, especially if you have not achieved it. Okay. So just don't bring in any random type of stuff. Just bring in like, like IS case, all right? Uh, I'm not identifying who the advocates are. And Bila's case, is it not identifying the advocate, not getting the story or, or not distributing? Uh, Bila, what's, what's your case? Uh, I think uh, it is more of the not distributing as well. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, Tendi, Aya actually has no reason she shouldn't be able to find an advocate because she can always look back into the past, right? Yep. For for past guests <laughs> and bring their stories forward. So Aya, you could be looking at past reviews and then connect that review to a guest and go like, okay, we have the contact information or Instagram of that guest. Let's get in touch with them and see if they want to have their story heard, right? Uh, it could be their one year anniversary since they've been to Bali. Something like in that would give you a reason to get involved, okay? So um, it's more just being more proactive in IS case. And in Bila's case, it's sharing the information so that we can see it. Um, Bila, I don't see too much distribution stories from your side, so I can't help you, right? I don't know what, what where you're distributing or, or you know your emails and such. So if it's an email uh, blast, I need to see the email. I need to see the distribution list. So then we can actually check on that and figure out if it's if it's the distribution error. Okay, that's it. Have a good day, everyone. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Bye.